Movie advertising must be a really tough gig. Let me just say this right off the back. I love this movie. At first I kind of wrote it off as this little cutesy thing with animals with like the child font in the title. But after seeing it, I've got to say, what you get here is a really solid comedy drama that does both parts really well. One scene, your eyes might get a little watery, and two scenes later, they'll give you a pretty big laugh. Matt Damon plays a uh, family man widower, Benjamin Mee, who's kind of having a rough time raising his two kids. Um, he has a seven-year-old daughter who I spent half of the movie thinking she was like four or five, and she's like the cutest thing. Like, her performance literally brightened this movie. And then there's the son, who's the complete opposite. Like, the mom's death did not have the best effect on him, and he spends most of the time brooding and clashing with his dad. I, I, I have bangs in that joke. One, one thing I didn't like about this movie, though, like, they did use the death of the mom as a crutch to elicit emotion a little too much. Like, it was necessary at times, but other times it was just, like, the director really wanting to tug at your heartstrings a bit too much. But that's just a nitpick. It really didn't take me out of the movie. But eventually Benjamin's just like, okay, we need a fresh start. So they see a house, and they're like, we love it. And then the realtor's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's a zoo. Matt Damon's like, oh. But after seeing how happy it makes his daughter, he's just like, okay, sure, we'll take it, why not? Then comes Scarlett Johansson and her team of mid misfits who work at the zoo. Like, I like them and how each of them were developed. And they really just come together and work together and to rebuild the zoo. You get an interesting look at the animals, like... Of the animals, the movie does focus more on one of the tigers and the bear. Like, they get the most screen time out of them. Crystal the monkey makes an appearance and gives you a few laughs. Thomas Hayden Church plays Matt Damon's brother. And I, I like this character. Like, he brought a lot of comic relief. And he was a little Bill Murray-ish, which I thought was cool. Um, like, with this kind of movie, you already know what happens next. Like, it's cliche to a T. But even if you know what's going to happen, doesn't mean you don't want to see how Cameron Crowe the director makes it happen. And I, I like the direction, though. I could have done less with the close-ups to Matt Damon's face. Like, the, the camera really got in there. Like, I was sitting in the front row of the theater, and it was like I was seconds away from kissing him at times. I like Matt Damon, but not that much. But yeah, you like the characters, they're developed really well, and you want to see them get what they want slash deserve at the end. And the movie will surprise you at times. Like, for example, this is a PG movie, but they got away with some pretty surprising curse words. Like, the little girl at the end of the movie says, like, the funniest, most shocking line I've heard all year in a movie since, like, The Hangover Part 2. And I thought it was great, but at the same time, I gotta admit, it, it was a little inappropriate for this kind of movie. But at the same time, I'm 19 and not a parent, so what do I care? The movie is pretty family-friendly despite that, but basically if your kid still believes in the Easter Bunny, there's a specific reason I use it as an example. It might be a little too adult for them. Like, this movie does have its serious thematic moments. Like, Benjamin and his son, like, really clash towards the end, and it all comes out, like, everything they have against each other. But I, I was just like, wow, by the end of the scene, but... I, I love the comedy, I love the drama, I got to see my favorite actress of 2011, Eli Fanning, in another role. She was great as, like, the slightly creepy, borderline stalker country girl. And she was still too good for Benjamin's son. Anyway, this was the best movie to come out this Christmas season, second to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and I strongly recommend it.